Hi guys, welcome to another video. So today we're gonna talk about tip drying and how you can get less tip dry. So we're starting right now. So what is tip dry? It's paint drying on top of your needle and it just keeps on building up and uh, after a while it even can block your paint so it doesn't spray properly anymore or you can even get blowouts. So first of all I want to tell you guys that tip dry it doesn't depend on the brand. Some people say ah oh, Createx it doesn't shoot well because I always get tip dry and stuff. Well that's because you're using it wrong or you're using the wrong reducer or you have a really bad quality airbrush the needle might be bent just a little bit or the environment you're working in either a very hot or a very moist area that also has a lot of influence on tip drying so bear that in mind it doesn't depend on the brand that's a very important thing to know I don't say that every brand should shoot as easy as the other one but uh, what I'm saying is that if you get a lot of tip dry with a specific brand it's not that brand's fault most often you, you, if you're shooting non airbrush paints yeah then you could get a lot of tip dry of course that makes a difference but most brands or which are meant for airbrushing they've been field tested very thoroughly and if you use them correctly you're not gonna get a heck of, of a lot of tip dry depending on the environment as well and uh, the kind of airbrush of course but you do got brands which shoot easier than other ones that's that's a fact absolutely it's just a, a matter of using them correctly one thing that is the same for every brand that is the values black and white those tend to cause more tip dry more easily because of the pigments uh, black and white pigments are a little heavier and they are uh, easier to get tip dry with. Another thing that I want to tell you guys is that use the correct reducer for the correct brand. Don't mix them up or don't uh, use water as a reducer or water with a little bit of dish soap, dish soap or even um, the Kleenex, the, the, the window cleaner solution those things are good when you're painting on canvases when when you don't need adhesion because on a canvas there's no there's you're not gonna cast a canvas with with hooks on it or you're gonna get pike or or other 2d critters biting in it so for a canvas it doesn't matter that adhesion is so so important but when we're painting lures then adhesion is super important for the quality of your lures because a clear coat doesn't adhere to the plastic of the lure itself, it adheres to the first surface that it has contact to and that is paint because when we build up paint on top of a lure your clear, clear, your clear coat is not gonna touch the very base of your lure, it's gonna adhere to your paint. So if your paint doesn't adhere to your lure you can already guess what happens after after a few a few casts or, or a bite or Okay, some might last a little longer, but still at the long run, adhe adhesion is super important for lure painting. So that is why these reducers for every brand, they, they, they've been tested, field tested for a very long time. They, they all try to stick out from the rest. So they're all trying to make the best product. It's, it's not about just making money because honestly, reducer, it doesn't cost much. This bottle is about 12 euros, 15 euros maybe and you only need one drop because we're lure painting so we don't use more than five or six drops of paint or even less mostly i use less so i only need one little drop of, of reducer in there so this bottle is gonna last me for at least a year so it's not expensive at all but the quality it makes a huge difference so use the right kind of reducer no water no kleenex no syllab bang no window cleaner stuff don't do it it's gonna influence your quality a lot what also has a huge influence on tip drying is the quality of your airbrush and especially the needle quality of the airbrush is mostly good on all of them even the cheap ones these days are pretty okay but the needle how fine it's polished how 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 uh, clean the surface is that's the huge difference now 
you can polish your own needles but um, there's always a risk bending the needle or the risk of taking too much material too much metal away from the needle and then it's gonna get more brittle which is also not good so good quality needles or a good quality airbrush does make a huge difference as well when it comes to tip drying so let's quickly talk about the environment um, a very moist or a very hot area it, 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 it all can change from day to day you, you can be having almost no tip dry for an hour in a, in a certain day and another day it's really warm or it has rained a lot and it's all vaporizing and there is much more moist in the air then you could get a lot of tip dry so the environment also has a lot of influence on this but it's beyond our control unless you have an environmentally controlled area but I think most of us don't so the environment also plays a really big role on how much tip dry you can get alright for example when it comes to Createx and using this paint correctly I I almost add I almost always add a little bit of 4030 in the paint unless uh, it's the new wicked line because um, the new wicked opaque line already has this kind of resin in there so you don't need to add 4030 or 4050 anymore because it's already in there but all the other paints I do add a little bit because it changes the composition of the paint um, and it also tints it out already a little mostly I need to add a little bit of reducer anyway because um, 4030 is still on the thicker side but knowing that you changed the composition it also gives way less tip dry it's way easier to shoot it's much more smooth and adhesion it's so much better as well what also works for people who have a lot of tip dry is using a paint retarder uh, you got use them um, for every brand because again it's brand specific but a paint retarder makes the paint dry slower and that makes a huge difference in tip dry because tip dry it's just mainly paint drying on your tip because the paint dries too quickly. Alright guys, so now I'm gonna show you a few examples of things you can do to avoid a little bit of tip dry or things you can do to um, learn to work with tip dry a little bit quicker. First of all, the first tip I got is I always take the needle cap off because I like to, when I have paint on there, I like to pluck it off with my nail just like that. Easily you can take a lot of tip dry away like that, it's nothing difficult. Or I have a little sponge here which I always uh, wet with a little bit of water and sometimes some airbrush cleaner or reducer in there. But the cleaner dries uh, not so fast as the reducer so I prefer cleaner. Just dip it a few times and blow the excessive water off and then your needle is ready to go again. It's really easy, really quick and you don't risk bending your needle because, because the sponge is really soft. So a thing is that a lot of people still think that Createx is ready to use from the bottle uh, and that's not the case for most of their paints because uh, when they created uh, Createx paints, uh, especially in the early days, they wanted to be able to use for as many applications as possible which also included painting on shirts um, and in order to paint on the fabric and not through the fabric the paint needs to be a little bit of a thicker consistency to do that so that's why they just came out with a, a good reducer and a little bit of a thicker paint so people who don't want to shoot on shirts could just reduce their paints a little bit and use it for other applications as well so it became very wide in uh, order what you could use Createx for alright so I got some wicked black in my chamber uh, it's not thinned down so it's really thick and I'm gonna show you it still shoots but I gotta up my air pressure a lot as you can see guys it still shoots sure I can shoot it without reducer it's really thick and it's great for shirts and stuff but as you can see on the paper it's really grainy it's not a, a really nice and smooth transition um, if we're doing lure painting and want to do a little bit more finer details or want to have a clean pattern on there then you should really use some reducer but if you're just doing a base coat well you can shoot it without reducer but still as you can see maybe you can even see that I am already building up tip dry so if I shoot a little bit more
my needle is already turning really black. So for some paints that are really thick and you're not using any reducer, it is super easy to get tip dry, of course, because the paint is really thick and it's not really meant for an airbrush to spray that that thick in there. Just imagine uh, you're you're drinking a really thick milkshake with a straw. You know it doesn't work well. It's the same with the airbrush. He doesn't, he cannot draw enough paint through there. So the paint is not flying out very smoothly, and that's why it gets stuck on the needle that easily. And then it dries up because you're still blowing air over the paint. And as you know, air always dries paint. So now I still got this really thick wicked black in there. I'm gonna show you guys if I add some reducer. Now it's it's just a very little bit of paint left in there. I'm gonna add two drops of reducer in there. Let's let's do a little bit over the top. Let's add three drops just to show you guys what happens if you use too much reducer. Okay so I lowered my pressure. I used about I would say 70% reducer and some people say like hey <coughs> I used a lot of reducer and still I'm getting a lot of tip dry. Well, let's spray out the excess first. So as you can see I'm now spraying 70% reducer and just a little bit of pigment. And why am I still building up? <clears throat> but still I'm getting a little bit of tip dry and it's just a matter of uh, a few minutes I would say before I get tip dry. It's because too much re reducer um, dries more quickly than the medium in the paint. So if you're thinning down paint with 70% of reducer you're gonna lose a lot of adhesion and your paint is gonna dry really fast as well. Because if I blow this, blow some air over it it's dry. Well, if I did that with a paint which had a little bit of 40 30 in there and just a little bit of reducer, it would have still have been wet. Um, and that's also a thing. How faster the paint dries, the more tip dry you get. It's really important. So think of when you're using a lot of reducer, so your, your medium is almost gone, and then you're shooting with a lot of air, and then a little bit of paint gets stuck on the needle. You can imagine that is going to dry really quickly on top of your needle. And that's why you get a lot of tip dry when you're using too much reducer as well. Another super important thing I want to let you guys know is that keep your air pressure on when spraying. There is this huge mistake I see even professional artists make uh, on YouTube, even experienced lure painters, I see a lot of people still making this mistake. The very first thing when you take an airbrush course is they're going to learn you to keep your air pressure on. This is super important. So what I mean by that, I keep my air pressure on, I'm shooting a little bit of paint, okay, I'm done with that, and I still keep the pressure on, and then I release. Why is that? Because if I would stop my air pressure immediately together with my paint, I will have still some paint in here because it didn't blow that through. And that paint is gonna sit there and either dry if I'm doing something else like looking for a stencil or um, yeah, you know, doing something else if you're putting the airbrush away for just a minute. It's gonna dry in there or when you're gonna shoot again, you're gonna blow out some paint first before it's gonna be normal again. I'm gonna show you guys, so what I mean is don't do this. Because now I stopped, you can see already I have a huge ton of tip dry on my needle. It's like a lot on there. But when I wanna resume my painting on my lure and I'm gonna start, I, I haven't shoot any paint, I'm just gonna shoot air now. You see? There's already paint coming out of there because, see, there's there's paint building up in here. If you don't shoot that out first, so I'm I'm painting something and I stop. I want to start again, and there is paint, and not even to mention the ton of tip dry I already got now, which I didn't have when I was shooting with um, just the air on. So, very very basic. 
it's super important to keep your air on you're shooting you're shooting some paint you're doing your lines or details or even when you're doing a base coat I stop paint I stop shooting paint but I'm still shooting air and I've got way less tip dry I got nice lines and the next time when I start nothing is coming out when I'm doing the wrong thing I'm painting and shooting it like this and drawing a line and stopping like this immediate tip dry and the next time I start paint comes out where I don't want it to be super important keep the air on now when you're keeping the air on I got a really big compressor which I especially bought for this occasion um, and I paint a lot as well I use this this thing daily um, the thing is when you're using one of these small airbrush compressors which have to work a lot when you're shooting a lot of air um, this technique might not be ideal like using the air the whole time I can do this with my compressor that's no problem I'll, he can do this all day but the small ones they if they have to work hard they tend to get overheated and when they get overheated they're building up moisture inside of the tank which will go through your hose and then go through your airbrush so if you have one of these tiny compressors you there is a there is a thing you can do you can when you're shooting air and then you're gonna shoot paint and you're gonna stop for just a split second stop shooting paint first keep the air on for a half a second doesn't need any much more doesn't need any longer just a little bit shooting paint stop stop the air and then you will will you will avoid the same problem you're, then you're using your cr your airbrush correctly which is super important keep the air pressure on even when you're working with a small compressor keep the air on for at least half a second after shooting paint or even less it doesn't have to be long but just a little bit so that last tiny bit of paint that you let through um, from the from the chamber towards your needle through the nozzle so that is gone and it's not building up here because you're gonna get a lot of problems if you're always like flicking your your airbrush trigger it's it's not meant for that it's really wrong so keep the air pressure on that's like a golden tip another great tip is I still got my 70% reducer in here and as you can see I still would have a lot of tip drive I'm blowing but now I'm gonna lower my air pressure I was shooting about um, almost 30 psi now I'm shooting about half of that what is the difference now it means I'm shooting less air with the same amount of paint and the thing the theory is when you're shooting more air um, the paint is gonna dry quicker too and especially when you got a lot of reducer in it is gonna be very sensitive to the amount of air so if you're shooting less air your paint is gonna dry less quickly and because it's so thin down you don't need a lot of air pressure and then you will also avoid a little bit of tip dry if you want to thin down your paints uh, a lot anyway so now you can see I'm having a little bit of a struggle right now this is also a good example I probably have some uh, buildup on the inside of the airbrush so by flicking the trigger I probably have built up some dry paint in there I can also see I'm almost out of paint that might also be a problem alright let's take some just regular black opaque one tiny drop of reducer in there Make sure I don't got any tip dry Do a little back flush. And there it is again. Now it is shooting. So there was, as you can see, the back flush did work after I just added some paint. So I could blow out that tip dry that's on the inside. So as you can see, not keeping the air pressure on when you stop painting is going to cause a lot of trouble for you this was a great example I'm really happy it actually happened on camera so I could show you guys but now as you can see I'm shooting at a very low air pressure only 15 psi or something so I can do this fine lines some dagger strokes 
really nice perfectly just a little bit of reducer a little bit of paint and if the combination is right and you got a good airbrush and uh, the environment is mild then it's perfectly like this and as you can see the tip dry was very minor it was almost nothing which is great last but not least i got one more tip for you guys and that is when it comes to using the brands correctly use some 40 30 balancing clear with your createx paints it just makes a huge difference and as you can see 40 30 it dries to this kind of plasticky uh, substance so for lure painting this is perfect it's quite hard it's not super solid but it's a uh, little bit flexible so if your paint adheres and becomes this kind of substance and you clear coat this you're gonna have a durable lure and that's why 4030 is so important always shake well I just did one drop um, just, I'm not gonna use too much of this it's just for showing you guys the difference now 4030 can also be used to make your paint tr more transparent so if you want to make your paint more transparent don't use more reducer because you're, you are making your paint more transparent but you're losing adhesion and you're also gonna get more tip dry like I uh, explained before if you're using your 4030 to make your paint more transparent you are actually going to make it more transparent but you're keeping your medium in there so adhesion is going to be better sprayability is going to be better it's going to be much smoother it makes a huge difference in using these paints correctly so 30 40 30 if you want to make your paints more transparent that's the way to go now this is opaque black now probably with this little bit of uh, amount of 40 30 you're not going to see much of a difference but Imagine if I would take one drop of black and like four drops of 4030, then do a little bit of thinner in there. You you will see that I will have like a very subtle black uh, color. It might almost be a little bit of a grayish color, which is ideal for doing uh, small details, shadows, uh, all the all the small stuff, and you don't want a, a real black spot on there, which is great. So yeah, 4030 still very low air pressure I'm gonna up it a little bit because I prefer working with higher air pressures anyway because I think it's easier for me and the 4030 makes the paint a little thicker again because we thinned it down a little bit too much gonna shoot the excess out first and as you can see it's getting less black, it's getting more of a grayish now already. As you can see, it shoots perfectly. There's almost no tip dry on there. I can I can do this all day just it's also a good exercise practicing your dagger strokes and everything it's great for detailing and freehanding uh, because I find a lot of lure painters out there they use too much stencils and they're lacking a little bit of uh, of a uh, freehand control I would say and freehanding is gonna make it so much better and easier and it makes a huge difference as well so practice your freehand work as well it really makes a huge difference in lure painting as well I can I can once um, I will do a video soon about how to use an airbrush and then I'm gonna give you some uh, good exercises for freehanding as well so you can practice that but as you can see this is the createx opaque black um, from air, the, air, the airbrush color line is one of the oldest um, it's one of the heaviest pigments and it's one of those that tend to dry quicker than other paints uh, the wicked line is a little bit more recent it's finer pigments and it dries a little bit slower but as you can see I'm still shooting 
my black paint without any problems it's really smooth so yeah guys as you can see I start to build up a little bit of tip dry but still I can go on it's getting a little bit more um, grainy as you can see even the fine lining it's getting a little bit more grainy so now it's time to take the tip dry off but that was significantly longer than um, without 4030 or when I when I showed you guys when you're using too much reducer with the too high air pressure there are so many factors that uh, that affect tip dry that it's really difficult to explain it's it's super important to experiment for yourself when you're noticing hey I'm getting a lot of tip dry with this paint hmm what should I do maybe maybe I use too much reducer maybe I should add some 40-30 and see if that helps maybe I should up my air pressure a little bit maybe I should lower my air pressure a little bit play around with that but if you're noticing it's not going well if you're noticing you're getting a lot of tip dry in this case then stop and think for a second um, analyze what the problem could be and try to fix it instead of complaining on the paint or on your airbrush because even with the cheaper airbrushes the like the Alibaba wish uh, whatever kind of uh, airbrush I can still do detailing sure I'm gonna get more tip dry uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna take more effort but I can still do it it's it's it depends so much depends on the experience you have with all these paints and the know-how how to use them and that is the big difference so don't be afraid to experiment so take your time to analyze your problems and try to solve them instead of uh, blaming something else because a lot of these problems they can be solved it's just it's a very difficult subject because there are so many factors that have an effect on this so guys I hope you learned something if you have any questions about tip drying or other questions related to paint leave them in the comments down below and I will try to help you figure out uh, what the problem could be or how we can solve it I really hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something if you haven't seen my video about reducing paints you can check it out here it's a really great video with tons of information on how to reduce your paints correctly thank you for watching and have a nice day Bye-bye.